Hello there, the internet. Michael here once again for kind of a more special video today. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, over the Las Vegas weekend, we actually got to talk to Stan Mullis, driver of the Share Life Vacations LV.net Toyota for MBM Motorsports. Um, we actually got the opportunity to sit down with him once again to kind of follow up on that weekend and kind of preview going into the Phoenix weekend. So here's kind of how that interview went. First of all, thank you for taking this meeting. We wanted to follow up with you. The last time we spoke uh, was before practice, and uh, we wanted to get your experience from that point on. What happened after all that? Well, got to keep in mind, I have, I've raced a little bit last year in the uh, truck series. The, it's a local Southwest late model truck series and uh, won some races and actually won the championship. But uh, those trucks are not the same as an Xfinity car. And the last time I'd been in an Xfinity car was November of 2020. So I'd had a full season off and a couple of races. So it'd been a while since I sat in a car. So I didn't know how quickly I would get acclimated to the car. But luckily, we rolled out with that uh, short little practice. The practice was scheduled for 20 minutes, but by design, by our plan, since we had to go out and qualify first, we came in after 14 minutes to start letting the car cool off. Because Were you doing mock qualifying runs? No, we weren't, but um, the, the car heats up uh, out there running. So we ran, I think we ran uh, 12 laps at speed. Um, fortunately, I got up to speed pretty quickly and comfortable in the car pretty quickly. We came down after about eight laps and made a made an adjustment. The car was a little tight. So uh, they made uh, quite an adjustment to free it up and went back out and it was it was as free as I could stand it. So they asked me if I wanted more of that and I said that's that's as free as I can stand it. Um, let's uh, let's stop with that. And uh, do you prefer the car to be a little loose? Well, free is fast. Yeah, loose is fast. Uh, okay. So some of the things they said in the days of thunder is true. Uh, loose is fast on the edge of out of control. Right. And that's where you like it, your style of driving. Yeah, you, you, you have to have it there to try to make the race because it was it was going to be close for us to make the race. Uh, to make the race, we needed to run a 31 uh 31.75 second lap. And uh, in practice, we ran a 32.6. But again, I wasn't trying to bury it, just getting comfortable in the car. So I need, I knew I needed to pick up uh, at least half a second. And it turns out I needed to pick up a full second. And in order to do that, for qualifying, we tape the nose off. And that gives it more aero, cuts through the air better but it also frees the car up a little bit because it has more downforce on the front end. Right. So uh, in order to make the race, I knew I had to, to sail it off into turn one harder than I had in practice. So drove it in there deep thinking it would stick and uh, it didn't stick. Oh man. The so rear you end. Just, uh, you traveled up out a little bit? Thing. Yeah, it stepped out. I had to chase it up the hill. And uh, if you watch it on video or on the TV, um, it doesn't look like a huge moment, but it probably cost us about a second on the track because yeah. when it steps out, you chase it up the hill, you're out of the groove, you're out of the gas for a moment, uh, you're scrubbing off speed. And once you scrub off that speed to build it back up, uh, just takes time. So, uh, just to guess, we probably scrubbed off a second or so, uh, there's some bumps right there as well. It, was that part of the equation? Part of the equation, yeah. When you drive it in there, since I drove it in harder than practice, it hit the bumps a little different, stepped out. And uh, it was a good car, capable of making the race. If all the, if, if everything fell into place when we, when we ran that magic lap, um, if we'd had a second lap, I feel like we would have made the race. Uh, when you go out there on cold tires, it takes, it takes a little bit to get heat in the tires. And I've always qualified the same way. Generally, it's two lap qualifying. So I'd normally pace myself the first lap, just run smooth, and the second lap is the money lap. But I uh, didn't have that opportunity this time. Plus, we were the first one out to qualify. So, yeah. uh, you know, it'd been drizzling rain. You never know what, what the condition's going to be. 
You held P1 though. You could say that. P1 for a bit, no doubt. Right. And and uh, we ended up qualifying 38th, which there was 38 spots, but we got bumped due to provisionals. Um, there's six provisionals, so and we knew that that would happen because we didn't have points from last year from taking the year off. So um, we knew we had to qualify into the top 32 to make it. But going in, I told everybody, my sponsors, everybody, it's a long shot for us to make the race. But we'll go out there and get some seat time, get some exposure. And uh, hopefully the seat time that I got here in Vegas, I can carry that momentum down to Phoenix. And, and uh, that one's going to be a tough one to make, too. But now I've got 15 minutes under my belt. So that's what I was going to ask you about. Uh, what did you learn? Well, just, you know, there's always that when you haven't been in a race car in a long time, you always wonder, what am I going to forget? What am I going to miss? So it kept running through my head. Um, what am I not thinking of? Okay. Yeah. You don't want to go out there and do something stupid. <laughs> so, um, so I kept, uh, kept wondering, and I did one thing very stupid. Uh, we fired up to roll out and uh, crew chief asked me a question and I hit what I thought was the push to talk button on the wheel. It was the kill switch. <laughs> so I killed the car right before. Uh, oh, your heart and probably practice. started racing. Yeah, that was in practice. So, uh, but it was funny. And I thought to myself, well, if that's the worst mistake I make today, we're in good shape. So yeah, that's uh, not so bad. So it was, uh, it was a good time. We accomplished what we expected and what we wanted to accomplish. Uh, to beat nine of those animals out there it was going to be a, a tall order um you know those guys are out there to to get with it so to outrun nine of them i'm i'm happy we out qualified few of them so i'm still holding my record i've never qualified last okay so uh we beat a few of them and some of them you know stuffed it in the wall so i'm glad i brought it home in one piece and we can adjust it make it right for phoenix and and move on very good. So, Stan, uh, this year NASCAR has changed the way practice and qualifying works. We now have shorter sessions and it rolls right into qualifying. Uh, with the 15 minutes you have under your belt at Vegas, does that change the approach you take to Phoenix or are you going to take the same approach you would normally take to a race weekend? Well, it does change your approach a little bit because if we had had the old school two hours of practice, uh, pretty sure we would have made this race because we could have taken the time to dial that car in. Uh, what we did is we freed it up a little bit too much, just taking a quick guess. Uh, so if we had had a couple hours to go out and, and uh, run three or four laps, come in, adjust, run three or four la laps, check tire temperatures. We didn't even do a, a tire test, a tire temp test. And that tells you a lot about the race car. But practice was one thing. The biggest thing that hurt me personally was one lap qualifying. I've yeah. always qualified the same way where you, where you just lay down one smooth one, get heat in the tires, hit your marks, and then lay down that money lap where you're holding your breath, <laughs> you know? Our friend Matt Jaskol had the same issue. Um, so, yeah, he ag agrees with you, I assure you. Um, um, yeah. You were talking about your sponsors earlier a little bit. Uh, I'm one of them, or my company is anyway, LV.net. And when we did the pre-interview, uh, you mentioned us and we had saw the stickers there. Uh, couldn't help but notice that by the time you made it to practice, it just said net. Yep. We, we should uh, probably we lost address the LV that. portion of our sponsorship. What happened is uh, NASCAR, as we rolled through tech, NASCAR looked at the car and said, uh, you can't have LV.net as a sponsor. You've got to cover that up. And we had run a sister company called lasvegas.net multiple times in the Cup right. Series, Xfinity Series. Uh, and again, here at Phoenix, you'll be having that brand. Yeah, so we didn't think any, anything of having uh, the LV.net, but their issue was Xfinity's the title sponsor. Xfinity. They're an internet provider. Internet. Yes. Yeah. And LV.net is an internet provider. We didn't think there would be any issue because completely separate markets uh, Xfinity is not in the Las Vegas area and LV.net, uh, doesn't do business anywhere that Xfinity does. So we didn't think it would be an issue. Uh, and in that interview, by the way, I made a comment about uh, <laughs> yeah. LV.net being so wonderful 
and got me away from the bad company. The bad company is not Xfinity. Yes, the bad company is a Let's make that very company. clear, Stan. Yeah, That's not what you meant. We, we love Xfinity and appreciate what they do. The bad company is another company that will remain nameless uh, yeah. that I just had a horrible experience with. I own several businesses and um, internet's very important. We went with fiber optics through this other company and it was supposed to be uh, incredible service. And all it was was an incredible headache and billing errors. And finally, I found the, uh, the, uh, the savior in the internet world for me, which was LV.net. And uh, it turns out, not only they took care of my internet service, they've been helping me with a race car and sponsorship, and it's been a great relationship. So uh, appreciate LV.net, but no, nothing but good things to say about Xfinity and what they do for our, our sport. And no hard feelings from LV.net out there, Xfinity people. We're, uh, we understand, we get it. We'll use our uh, other brand, uh, something that's not internet related. Uh, what we're doing today, I believe, is we're putting a uh, new decals on the TV panel on the rear bumper and on the hood that say lasvegas.net and that's a hotel uh, and show ticket provider, that type thing, uh, which we embrace even though I own Share Life Vacations and we're somewhat of competitors, but uh, that's what makes a healthy marketplace is good competition. So, yeah, I, I did have this thought that, uh, you know, in the NBA, it's sponsored by Nike, but there's players that wear Adidas and other brands, um, and it's kind of good for business, you know, especially the back half guys, you know, you don't have the same resources some of the marquee teams do, so to have some of your market cut out and not allowed, it, it makes it even more difficult to find sponsorship and to get the support you need to be able to compete. Yeah. But I'll leave and it that, at that. Uh, with that being said, you know, that was the same, same motor and, and everything that we ran in Phoenix two years ago. And uh, that car went to Phoenix last year. Stephen Light made a qualifying effort. And uh, it didn't make the race, but not really due to anything other than circumstance. He went out early in the session and the track was cold as it heated up. The lap times kept getting faster and faster. So it was just a... Uh, it was a matter of circumstance. That, that was a good car. We had a great car in Phoenix two years ago. And um, I had teammates, Timmy Hill and JJ Yaley that year. And Timmy was running 22nd pretty much all day. I was running 23rd and JJ was running 24th and 25th. So I was, uh, I was happy with where the cars were. Uh, there at the very end, we ran out of gas playing some pit strategy and it cost me wow. a few spots, but we were right there in the the thick of it stayed on the lead lap for well over half the race, maybe close to two thirds of the race. And that's a tall order for, for uh, the quality of equipment and the seat, amount of seat time that I had. So, uh, you know, we, we got the lucky dog a few times, got some TV time, but uh, you got to be in the position to get those things. So looking forward to getting down to Phoenix. It's actually my favorite racetrack. It's like driving a roller coaster because it has uh uh, about 30 feet, I'm told, of, of uh, elevation change. You dip through the dog leg and come back up. And yeah. it's just a fun track to drive with, you know, different corners. One being a, a flat corner, one being a high banked with the dog leg. That dog leg is a lot of fun. The car gets really light going through there. So looking forward to getting down there and turning some laps. And, and if the stars align, we'll make that race. If they don't, I went and had some fun, right? Yeah, man. I'm glad to be on there for the ride. So. All right. Well, what you got? So with that, I want to thank you, Stan, for coming back on the show. And good luck in Phoenix. Thank you, guys. Appreciate what you do. LasVegas.net and LV.net. So thanks again, guys. Something brand new we also just launched yesterday. You can now follow us over on Twitter at Donahue underscore Vargas. So we're going to be posting some new video updates as well as hopefully interacting with you guys during race weekend. So make sure to go give that a follow. And with that, we'll see you guys in the next one.